Is this a perfect time for realism in filmmaking? I've been giving this question some thought lately, partly because of the approach that I'm taking with the new film that I'm making, also because of a lot of the films that I've been exploring on YouTube, a lot of the really uh, DIY independent feature films that are being made available on YouTube, and also because of this book that I've been reading uh, called Shooting Midnight Cowboy. It's about the making of the film Midnight Cowboy from 1969. And that film came out at a very pivotal moment for the Hollywood film industry as it was transitioning away from the kind of big budget blockbuster spectacles of the earlier era towards a more smaller, intimate, personal, and realistic style of filmmaking that was largely responding to the climate, the social climate of the times. And I couldn't help thinking of a parallel to our current moment. Of course, Hollywood movies, I think, continue to get bigger and more expensive and of course, with those kind of big tentpole releases, it really works against uh, smaller personal work being able to be made in that system, simply because there's so much money riding on the line that studios quite literally can't afford to take the chance on smaller projects or anything that's not going to have a, uh, a big financial return. And I was thinking about how uh, there's, there's some parallels here, too, with the type of technology that's being um, that, that, that's available now to filmmakers. I mean, it has been for a while. D digital technology, the small digital technology is nothing new, but I do think what's happening is it's getting better. Uh, it, it, it's now possible to create, you know, richer images, uh, to do more with the, f the footage that we shoot. Um, and, and so the, the, the uh, possibilities for the filmmaking from a purely technical standpoint are becoming more sophisticated which is removing some of the limitations that uh, filmmakers may have previously run into in, in making films entirely on their own. But what does this have to do with this realistic approach? Well, I think what it comes down to is that, to me, realist filmmaking at its best works on a small scale, on a low budget. And I think that some of the, the best work that I've seen, you know, and I'm going, you know, looking at it through the decades here, I think a lot of the best work that I've seen in the realist tradition uses the limitations to its advantage. Uh, I mean, it's, it's an approach that works for realist filmmaking. You don't need a big budget. You don't need lots of extras. You don't need elaborate production design. Uh, one of the best films that I've seen uh, just recently, I watched it, was uh, Kess by Ken Loach from 1969. And this is a film very much in this kind of British realist tradition. Um, and it, it was such an incredibly beautiful film, such a, a powerful film. And it achieves so much with, in many ways, so little. Uh, and that's not to diminish everything that, that Ken Loach and the cast and the crew brought to the project. But I'm just saying that it, it, in many ways, it's a very scaled down, simple piece of filmmaking. But it's just as powerful and affecting as uh, anything I've ever seen. It, it, it's, it really is. And so I, I think that right now, what independent DIY filmmakers, and I'm talking about filmmakers working on a very small scale, you know, maybe in some cases just one, one person, you know, production teams here. Uh, I think that there is an opportunity to explore a lot of this same territory and to do it in a way that is just as rich and involving as as anything uh, and i'm already seeing this i mean this is not I'm, I'm not talking hypothetically here i mean i'm seeing so many interesting films now that are that are taking this kind of approach and uh you know it's very exciting and i think that one of the things that it's one of the things that has inspired me about it is to use a lot of the same techniques in uh, you know, in, in telling the kind of stories that I that I want to do, and I've I've always been working on a low budget. I mean, I've always been making films that are pretty much, uh, especially in the, the last few years. You know, it's pretty much just me and maybe one or two other people. And certainly, I'm not spending you know any money on this. But uh, what I am drawn to is how uh, realism can influence the types of subjects that. Um, that, that, that I'm thinking about filming and, you know, and, and how powerful that approach can be. Um, I wanted to give a special shout out to a YouTube channel. It's quickly become one of my favorite 
YouTube channels. It's called the Don't Tell Show, and I'll put a link to it here in the description. Uh, but on this channel, uh, they review uh, what, what he calls, you know, social realist, gritty, kitchen sink films. So very much films in this realist tradition. And I've gotten a lot of great recommendations uh, for movies from watching this channel, and also just been inspired by a lot of the commentary that I've that I've heard on there. So I wanted to give a shout out to this channel because this has been uh, influential in in my own thinking about realist filmmaking and how right now is in many ways I think the perfect time for this approach. Um, so anyway. This is just a few thoughts for the day about uh, kind of what I've been thinking about with realist filmmaking and why I think it's such a good time to explore this. Anyway, I'd be curious if, if you are making films in, in this approach or if you're drawn to films like this, I'd be curious to hear a bit about what you're working on. And, uh, you know, I think that there's, uh, I, th I think it continues to be an approach that yields a lot of really interesting uh, results. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I will talk to you soon.